So YouTube, this is all part of video number two. Um, this is one hour update. So I started at 10.03 or 10.04, basically it's 11.03 or 11.04 p.m. right now. We're gonna go through some parameters here. So everything's still working, no error codes. It's set to 86 degrees, the little lights off, the preheat light. Um, it's around 60 in the shop. I mean, it says 64. So this is telling me temperature that's in the shop. 64 degrees as you can see as the water gets hotter it tells this unit hey I can work harder so it's at 7.7 .7 amps it pulled 860 watts times 2 that's 1600 1720 watts 1.7 kilowatts is what we used in one hour with this unit now mind you that's starting from cold that's saying hey you can't work hard well, as you're using water and this will turn on it'll probably turn on straight to seven kilowatts and you know work from there work from seven to eight point seven so you'll pull maybe two or two point two kilowatts an hour in your general water heater turning on saying turn on because i gotta pump the temperature now as for performance um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you this the temperature sensor watch grabbing my finger I'll jump up to like, I mean, if your fingers aren't too warm, if I put it in my mouth, it goes up to like 80, uh, 95 degrees. Piece of foam, so my fingers don't burn off. I'm gonna show you how hot discharge temperature is. Now mind you, that is at 7.6 amps, so we still got one whole amp to go. So I'm going on the discharge pipe. Hundred fifty degrees, and that's not even full capacity. That still has, let's say, room for fifteen percent rise in capacity. Obviously, the harder it works at the top, it's not equivalent to fifteen percent. It might be seven percent rise in performance, but fifteen percent in power consumption. Let's say because the harder it works, the less efficient it is. And the return line, just for those who are interested as to how efficient it is, so we're at one hundred fifty supply. Let's see what we are in the return. Let's make sure. Got this in the right spot. Forty-five degree change in temperature. So starting at 150, returning at uh, 105. Now, just for comparison, I checked my pipes on my GE heat pump water heater. It's about the same thing. It'll run up to about 145, and it'll return at around. It depends it depends on how warm it is in the house around a 40 50 degree drop as well so the the you know the coefficient of performance for the coil releasing its temperature is very good now uh, I grabbed my wife's cooking thermometer because I think it's gonna be more accurate it's a little slower to work we're gonna see what the temperature is inside the water tank yeah, see, 63 degrees. That's what that one was saying. That's in the shop, so it's fairly accurate. Got a bunch of stuff holding up this bubble wrap. So this is one hour in, starting from a completely cold tank. Look at that. It's even bubbling. Look at that, now we're all fogging up. So it's climbing slow, but let's say it's gonna to get to 123 degrees. Now, like I said, that coil starts around a third way down. So it's the same temperature here, literally that water is ready to pour out of here, as it is here. I checked it with my other thermometer that I can push all the way down. So half the tank is 120 degrees. I just drained some water. I went home from my water heater, heat pump water heater, that's set into heat pump only mode. Now I'm not saying electric. Electric will kick on both elements. Heat pump only mode. It only heats, you know, with the coil. And uh, I drained the water. It's about 75 degrees on the bottom. Now my wife is doing some dishes, so whatever. You know, let's say it's not fully heated. So let's drain some water out of here and see 
Uh, I mean, I need to find a cup. Uh, this thermometer is slow, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use this thermometer. It's much quicker to react. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dump this water out. It's ready. Here. Set this up like this. Yeah, here you go. I'm gonna do this. Look at that. I just decided to shut off. That's fine. Oh, you know why? I bet you I just lost the connection here. I bet you that's why I did that. Yep, because it gave me an error code and then it just shut off. So this is a hard doorbell wire and that's super thin, like 25 gauge wire and the connection on them is very horrible because I snipped this off the indoor unit connected to that. Well, that's fine, we're at an hour. That's all I wanted to use this for anyways. So we are at 65 degrees, as you can see. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to drain some water. And I'm going to put this right into where it's draining out of. So this is the bottom of the tank when the mid to upper level is 120 degrees. We're going to check it as it's pouring out. I think it's not going to be too hot. It's probably going to be 80 degrees if that. Oh wow, you know what? It's not bad. 85 degrees. So your coldest that you can get is still 85 degrees on the bottom when you're 122 degrees on the top. Yeah, so it turned back on. It's going to go into preheat. Um, that's because, like I said, I... When I touch that, there's not a good connection. I didn't solder it or anything. I just barely looped one loop from the thin wire coming off the thermosistor onto the extension that then goes back to where it was connected to the computer on the Android unit. So 123 degrees and 85 degrees. Now, mind you, your hot water, you know, pulls from around here. I think I'm actually going to snip it and let it pull from the top. Why? Because I looked at uh, dissections of heat pump water heaters and that's what they do. Their water pickup tube is actually like right at the top. Why? Because they don't have an element on the bottom making the bottom as hot as a normal water heater would be. The water gradually drops the temperature because the heat pump water heater heats with a coil. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to snip my hot water pickup tube right up to the top just to make sure I get a, let's say, a more gradual use of my hot water. Like I said, just like they do, I, I looked at the dissections of the other water heaters. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say, uh, I should have calculated this beforehand. But what I'll do is I'll put in the notes to go, the amount of power we used, 936 watts, times two, 1850 watts. You know, okay, let's say 1900 watts. And we went from 56 degrees to 122 degrees in one hour. Yeah, it's powering back up. And we, I will put in the notes of how much power that's equivalent to as to just putting it in equation. 70 gallons and that much of a temperature rise, how much kilowatts. And then we used 1.9 kilowatts and you'll see the coefficient of performance. Now that's in 65 degrees. I would say that's the average temperature here in the upper states. Yes, it gets cold in the winter and warmer in summer, but 60 degrees, let's say is the average temperature. So that's what I would expect to see for, uh, for the year. Everything, everything seems to be fine. Like I said, other than me touching that with my, uh, meter there, that kind of threw everything off, but either way we'll be powering it off. Yeah, so it went right back. You can, as you can see, the defrost, well not defrost, but the preheat light went on when it reset, and it went right off. Why? Because the, it's saying, hey, that refrigerant is hot enough, and it goes right up to its 
it's gonna mean it's gonna come up but it's going right up to its amperage that it should be running at seven and a half eight amps and for those interested as well who are like hey I want more information than this LG is the only one who does this you see this port MVC jig that's what it says it's upside down I, I had Fredericks before and they have the same one because Frederick rebrands and they had a rebranded LG unit the HLV model they called it I forget what it was 24MY3J or something for about 150 bucks you plug in a, a module it works off of Wi-Fi signal and you download an app you get every single parameter pressure everything that this unit can see you get to see on your app just like the super special you know technicians I'm not making fun of them my buddy's one he's a HVAC tech but you don't need no you don't need to hook up no no gauges to this nothing you hook up your hundred fifty dollar unit you download an app and you got everything from the indoor temperature sensor fan speeds amperage that the motors are pulling everything it's ridiculous what you get so I'll probably be buying that just to get an idea it shows you graphs of how your power usage is um, just to get in a better idea of how everything's working but uh, I guess I'll power it off I'm done. I'm done doing my test for now. So I'll do the, I guess, my usage versus the normal usage that this sort of took in to raise the temperature. In the notes, I'm interested to see what it would be myself.